Hello, and welcome to Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael, and this is a sequel to the fourth video in the series on radiographic equipment. In this video, we'll be looking at some special configurations of X-ray tubes. We'll learn about the heavy-duty tube, the Super Rotolix metal ceramic tube, the mammography tube, and the grid control tube. We should also point out that this video was suggested by one of our viewers. Keep suggesting videos. We'll work on them as soon as we can. Think of the X-ray tube as you would a light bulb. The light bulb is a very unique invention with certain key components that make it to light up our rooms at home. However, if you were going to light up something a bit more different, you would need to modify the light bulb. You wouldn't use the same light bulb at home in some other place like a stadium, a refrigerator, or even a car headlight. Even though the same principle of the light bulb is maintained, certain configurations are made to serve these special purposes. This is the same way the fixed and rotating X-ray tubes, that would normally serve a conventional X-ray unit well, is configured and modified to serve another equipment, such as the computed tomography unit, mammography unit, and fluoroscopy unit. Before we look at these special tube configurations, we should point out that we discussed the standard fixed and rotating tubes in the last video. You might need to watch that video to well understand these modifications. We start out with the heavy-duty tubes. These are used in equipment that operate on high tube loading and short exposure times. Equipment like this includes sign and serial radiography equipment. Heavy-duty tubes are similar to the conventional X-ray tubes. Their major difference lies in the anode target. First, they have a significantly larger anode target than the conventional. This large anode diameter of about 120 mm gives a wider area over which the large amount of heat generated by this tube is spread out. To also improve heat dissipation, the anode rotates much faster in a heavy-duty tube. Also, instead of just tungsten, as seen in the conventional X-ray tube, the heavy-duty anode is made more compound with an alloy of both tungsten and rhenium, it also has a backing that is made of either molybdenum or graphite. This compound anode gives it a greater thermal capacity, allowing it to store more heat than regular tubes. The anode also has certain cracks on its surface. These cracks are placed on purpose to give room for the anode to expand when hot and contract when cool without getting distorted. Lastly, the temperature of the anode is monitored with a heat sensor that is normally placed behind the anode. This sensor is connected to certain lights which indicate to the operator when the tube is too hot to be operated. This helps to prevent damage to the tube from overheating. Next up, the Super Rotolix Metal Ceramic Tube. This is also useful in equipment that operate on high tube loading and short exposure times, such as sign radiography, serial radiography, conventional tomography, and computed tomography equipment. It also has the same anode modifications as in the heavy-duty tubes. However, in addition to this, this tube has its envelope made of metal and ceramic, instead of the glass in conventional tubes. This is useful because, when a tube gets overloaded, its tungsten filament gets so hot that it begins to evaporate. When it evaporates, particles of tungsten accumulate on the envelope. If the tube's envelope was made of glass, electrons could bombard the accumulated tungsten, causing the glass to break. But by making some parts of the envelope metal and others ceramic, the envelope is able to absorb these electrons without cracking. Next is the mammography tube, specially designed for the mammography unit. Mammography needs a low kilovoltage due to the low subject contrast of the breast tissue. Thus, it needs a tube that can comfortably generate low KV photons. Instead of the standard tungsten anodes, mammography tubes are made of molybdenum anodes, which offer a narrow spectrum of X-ray photons, which fall within the low-energy range needed. Also, their exit window is made of beryllium instead of the glass in standard X-ray tubes. Like we mentioned, the photons produced by mammography tubes have a lower KV or energy. If the exit window was made of glass, it would absorb these low-energy photons. By using a much thinner material like beryllium, photons can easily pass through. Also there is a much shorter distance between the cathode and the anode. This allows less work to be done in moving electrons from the cathode to the anode. When less work is done, there is less heating, and the life of the filament is prolonged. Lastly, the mammography tube has a much smaller focal spot of about 0.6 mm. This allows images to have greater resolution, a necessity in breast imaging. We will talk more about the mammography tube in a future video on mammography equipment. The last tube configuration that we'd be looking at is the grid-controlled X-ray tube. This tube is useful in equipment that need to be switched on and off repeatedly and rapidly. 
an example of which is sign fluorography equipment. Take note that the name has nothing to do with scattered radiation grids. Remember that a normal X-ray tube has two electrodes, the cathode and the anode. In this tube, the focusing cup is specially designed to act as a third electrode. This third electrode would control the flow of electrons from the cathode to the anode. It does this by generating a negative force field. And because same sides repel, this force field repels the negative electrons moving from the cathode filament to the anode. Now when a positive pulse is applied across the tube, the negative force field is removed, and electrons can now move freely to the anode target for photon production. By continuous removal and reappearance of the negative grid force field, rapid exposure sequences can be achieved. That concludes this video on special configurations of the X-ray tube. We would like to say a big shout out to Kurti Panaiher for suggesting this video. If you love this video and would want more content, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do enjoy the learning process and take care.